What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we can start with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, good Hi. to see you. Hi. Hi, friends. Leah, you like you got a whole bunch of books back there. That's, that's I a good look. I do. I do. She's trying like to show that, us huh? up. She's trying to look all you studious. Like I like it. <laughs> There's a library open. How? Absolutely. What do you know? So uh, today we got a treat for our viewers today. Uh, it's not every day you get a chance to talk to a real life magician. So uh, we're going to, and, and he'll be doing a little trick for us as well. So uh, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Chief, we have a fun guest with us today. He is a professional magician in Las Vegas known as the Dennis the Menace of Magic. And we're excited to see what tricks he has up his sleeve for us this afternoon. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Murray Sawchuk. Hey. What's up, you guys? How you doing? Hey, Murray. How are you? Hey. Doing great. How Good. about you? Good. Yeah. Living the dream, you know, getting through, you know. Well, we are excited for you to join us. Thanks so much for taking time out. And for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Share some love with Murray, and we'll read those live throughout the broadcast. Now is a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page, this is your reminder that we have Chief Chats every week, and we have great military-exclusive guests lined up for you all spring. So Murray, man, thank you so much for joining us today, man. We're super excited to have you with us. Uh, can you can you let the viewers know where you're calling in from today? I'm here in Las Vegas in my home. I'm in my office just kind of hanging out. And um, it's actually my day off from one of my shows. I work later this evening. So, um, so yeah, I'm just waking up, having my coffee with my dogs and my fiance and, and ta talking to you good people. So, so we got you working on your day off. Is that what you're saying? I know, exactly. But that's okay. <laughs> this is a good work. I love it. So it's I love this. <laughs> so I understand that you're back to doing regular shows in Vegas right now. Um, can you tell us what the last year has been like for you with COVID? And what did you do when you weren't able to be in front of an audience? Well, you know, I... You know, I, my key is always just to try and stay relevant. You know what I mean? And I think that that's probably the, one of the hardest things that we had to learn. Well, it's almost been exactly a year. I mean, my last show I performed in Vegas was March 15th, you know, 2020. And um, I thought we were coming back in two weeks. I think like most of us <laughs> did, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, two weeks turned into four and six and two months, as we all know. And I think I started going back online. Like I have a big YouTube presence with my yeah. you know with my show so i just started doing a lot more youtube videos uh, a lot and uh, me and my fiance started working together which we've never worked together because she's a dancer and a showgirl in town she was in the famous show jubilee the last show girl show here in oh. vegas so so we started doing stuff in the middle of our street because we thought it was funny and that's the only place we could work and and of course you got a lot of exposure off that and then along the summer as it came um you know we have a bunch of houses we work on and do properties that we own and somebody says you really should get into landscaping and I said, well, I've always landscaped my own houses for the last 20 years. So we ended up starting a landscaping company this summer called Dirt to Dreams Landscaping. And we have about a staff of six to 10 people. And usually most of the staff is actually ex stage techs from our theater world. And so we started that oh, company. Wow. So that's kind of kept us busy as just totally another kind of separate project. And now as of November of last year, I went back to work at my show at Tropicana um, at the Laugh Factory four days a week. And then literally uh, this week, we started back in my other show, which is called Fantasy at the Luxor, which is a, a topless review show, and I'm the comedy spot in that show. So yeah, so that's it's it's been it's been good for us. But we've also hustled, you know, and I think you just can't wait for someone to knock on your door. You got to go make things happen, you know. Mm. But that's, that's right. I love that persistence. That's you're absolutely right. You gotta if you want it, you gotta go get it. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that landscaping business, man, you make you making leaves and grass disappear, huh? That's exactly that's, <laughs> that's what oh I gosh. do. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm staying in shape and getting paid for it, which I, I'm not complaining about that, you know. So hey, there you go. Glad to hear that you've uh doing well and making it through the pandemic. Um share with us how did you get into magic and then how'd you make that a career? I read that you had your first professional gig at age 11. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm originally from Vancouver, Canada. I'm Canadian. 
and um, been in the States now for over 20 years. I became an American citizen um, uh, February 13, 2009. And one thing, you know, coming into the States, and I'll talk about the magic in a minute, but coming to the States, becoming a citizen, I've always been a huge supporter of the veterans and the USO and, and everyone who's out there. Um, you know, saving our lives and watching our country. And I said, well, you know, for me to come into this country and become a citizen, it was a, a big honor. And I always said I'd always support the USO and, and veterans and everything they do for us as a Canadian. And now that I am an American, you know, so it's the thing that I could do. You know, can you imagine me going the front line looking like this? That'd be it. I'd last two seconds. <laughs> so at least I can do is entertain the truth. But anyways, going back to Vancouver, yeah, I started... I started magic as a kid doing kid birthday parties and got a magic kid at age seven, like we all do. You know, we get toys and stuff and it, it just kind of stuck. And uh, at that time, I loved working and I loved making money. So I had a paper route. And uh, at the time, I started making flyers for leave raking and, and snow shoveling to just to put in the newspapers I delivered to get work. So I do it for my parents for free. And I thought, well, why can't I make money on it? So I did. And then once I got into magic, I still had those paper routes. And I thought I was good enough to maybe do kids' birthday parties. So I just started making up flyers on a, on a computer called the Commodore 64, which really dates me. Uh, <laughs> but I would make these flyers on a program called Print Shop, make go to the place for photocopying, and I'd make you know a couple hundred photocopies. So every time I got paid to deliver a newspaper, I'd put a, hey, do you want a kid's birthday party within there? So I was getting paid to advertise my own show. I don't know if the newspapers knew that, but it worked for me. And that's how I started getting, <laughs> getting booked. And that's how I kind of learned how to make money for myself. I completely forgot about the Commodore 64 and print shop. You just took yeah. me back to third grade, man. Yeah, the floppy disk or what we call the you floppy did. disk, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the big login code to get in. You miss one period <laughs> or like an L or a seven or something, and you'll never get in. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so let's let's talk about your nickname, Dennis the Menace of Magic. Yeah. So, so um. Can you, can you kind of tell us how, how that came about? Well, you know, De Dennis the Menace is a crazy blonde haired little kid that gets into trouble. But every time he gets into trouble, by the end of the story, he always gets out of it. And it's a win. And so my performance is always like that. If you ever watched my show, I don't take myself too seriously. And when, and when you look like a Q-tip, like I do, how can you? I mean, look at <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so that's always my persona on stage where I, something, I try to do something and I take people along this path and it doesn't go right it goes sideways and um and then and then at the end the trick really does work when people least expect it so that's kind of my style and i've always you know my my show's 80 percent comedy and 20 percent magic because I, I like to laugh and and it's the greatest form of entertainment when somebody does laugh because laughing is not a forced thing either it's funny or it's not and you know when it's not funny i've been there too <laughs> <laughs> so so who who was your who was your inspiration who did you who did you grow up watching that you were like, you know what, w whether it's magic, whether it's comedy, whether it's just performer. Well, I grew up watching all sorts of entertainment. You know, when I grew up, my parents uh, were older. They were, they're, my mom's in the late 30s. My dad was in his mid 40s when they had me. So I grew up watching a lot older program. I watched the news. I would watch the Lawrence Welk show, you know, it's the <laughs> longest I think, running public broadcast show in the world, in the States, you know, uh, to this day still. And and I grew up watching Danny Kaye and Fred Astaire and Phyllis Diller and Lucille Ball and Liberace and all these people. And everybody I watched had an extremely strong brand. Like when Lucille Ball would walk in a room, you know, or Jack Benny or even Fred Astaire, everyone had a brand and a look. And so that's how I got myself a brand with the hair and the glasses over time. I wanted something that people would know who I am before they knew who I was or am, you know. And so I, I learned. And I think the person that I was fascinated the most with was probably Fred Astaire. I just thought he was phenomenal. He could act, sing, dance. He was magic, you know, even though he is not a magician. Um, but magic wise, yeah, when I grew up, when I was like seven, eight years old, I saw David Copperfield vanish the Statue of Liberty, which I knew was a trick, but I thought it was just so well done and phenomenal. And, and he was the magician that I looked at and I went, holy smokes, that's pretty cool. And he made magic look really cool. Before that, it was Doug Henning. And that was before my time. Uh, during my time, but I was just too young. But at, in entertainment, though, I looked up to like Phyllis Diller, Lucia Ball, Liberace, all these great acts that didn't really take themselves too seriously, yet they were brilliant and very attractive and very entertaining and everything, but they really didn't take themselves too seriously. So. Mm. Oh, yeah. So you mentioned that you're a big supporter of the troops and um, our nation's heroes. So can you tell us why supporting the troops is so important to you? And then do you have any words of encouragement for our military family uh, 
military members and families who are watching right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm a huge supporter of the troops and the veterans. You know, it takes a lot of guts to do what you guys do. Um, and a lot of people don't realize what you go through and what you do and, and what, no matter where you're located, you know, and, uh, and, and the stress and the lifestyle it brings with the family that you have, your wife, your husband, your kids and all that. And, and it's because, you know, I can sit here and do my show in Las Vegas or wake up in the morning and, and feel comfortable in my own country because of you guys and ladies and women and men and the families that travel with them because they're part of the package as well. And um, I got to do a USO tour a couple of years ago with a couple of friends of mine, uh, David um, and Howard Blackwell, who are really good magicians and they're also in the service. They still are. And um, wow. they invited me along and I loved it. You know, went to, to uh, Greenland and Honduras and uh, Guantanamo Bay and, and some really cool places. We got to really meet the troops and the families. And I, I really love that. And I, I said myself, uh, because I just, I don't have the guts to go in the army. I don't, or the military, the Marines, the Navy. Um, and now I'm too old as well. But um, when I became American citizen, which is in 2009, February, I said, well, the one thing I can do at least to give back is to support the troops by entertaining them or going back and let them know that they are important to all of us here. And that's what I can do, you know, and maybe take note of the world of what they're in for a minute, for an hour and entertain them. You know, I was a huge, huge fan of Bob Hope and Toby Keith and Kid Rock and Wayne Newton, all these people that really are huge supporters of the troops. And I, if anything, I'd like to follow in their footsteps and give back. And I'd love to do a USO tour each year. I'd love that because um, it's, it's, it's my way of giving back. And it's something that I think is important in my world, at least, you know. So. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe we could, <clears throat> once all this craziness ends, we can get you get you to do some shows at, at some of our bases or something. Man. I'd love to, man. You know, I'd, at any time, my phone's always available and I'll always pick it up, so. <laughs> awesome. Excellent. We have been talking a lot. So Murray, I'm sure the military community would love to see you perform something for us. Do you have any tricks up your sleeve for today? A good question. I might actually. Um, I got a couple. Uh, one small one and one kind of has sleight of hand. Um, of course, we all love money. And I'm going to show it to the camera. If you can see it. It's a dollar bill, I think. If you watch very mm -hmm. carefully, you go like this. One, two, and you're like that. You notice it turns into Mentos. Oh. I, it makes no sense, <laughs> but neither do I. So what the hell? So, um, <laughs> you you then, turned it into Mentos, the fresh maker? How did you yeah. do that? Did you get your yeah. change? Did you get your change? That's, that's all I got. That's, I mean, that's all it does. I have no idea what else to do with it, but that's where we're at right now. So... You're not into Mentos, my apologies. I love those. Um, and then this is another trick. <laughs> if I would ask you to do, I'm going to angle my camera. So I want to use my desk here. And I know it's going to probably be a second. But I'm going to do a card trick right here. Right. All right, there it is. So you can see, you can see the desk here. Okay, good. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it on my laptop right here. And um, I, now if I were to ask you, um, what's your favorite card? You'd say the Queen of Diamonds, maybe the Ace of Clubs. Well, mine happens to be the Six of Clubs, all right? Because no one picks Six of Clubs. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. So, um, so I have eight of them because I wanted to have eight. And there's one contagious. So there's Six of Clubs. I'm going to put one down, okay? Like so. And I'm going to put one up, all right? Fair enough. And then I'm going to put one down. Okay, now here's the deal. There's one contagious card. So like I said, there's one down, one up. One down and then one up like so. And then one more down just because I can do it. And then one more up. And then there's the contagious card. All right. So I'm just going to do this so you can all see them and not hit my keypad. So I lose the whole darn thing. So there is the five of diamonds. So watch very carefully. Check this out. Here we go. If I go like this, this is the coolest thing. Like this. And you can actually feel it like that. <gasps> Isn't that weird? Wow. You go like this, right? And you flip that over. Like that, see? Oh my gosh. Oh my right? gosh. There, you go. uh, there it is. And I'm going to go over here. Uh, like that. And if I do this, that should do that. So there's that. Now, if I take these, this is the coolest move, like this. You watch really carefully. It almost looks like magic. Watch. One, two, three. It turns to a five of diamonds. You go like this, you go like this, like that. And let's do that. And there's another five. Go like this, one, two, three. There's that. And then we'll do this one last but not least. One, two, 
three. If we put all these together, all right? Um, here, let me show you, just because I know people are very skeptical. If you look at this, uh, there's one five of diamonds, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, and then six, and then seven, and eight, and then nine five of diamonds. And there you go. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh! oh. What just happened? Love it. Oh my gosh! Well, there you go. And that's what kept me out of the army, people. <laughs> There you go. Oh man, okay. <laughs> that, yeah. That's that's that was crazy. That, you know, I I was looking for the change for the Mentos. You know, that, I know it probably only cost about sixty nine cents. So yeah, I was <laughs> <laughs> about sixty nine to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was awesome. Awesome. Uh, thank you for for giving us a little demo of of what you do uh, on a daily basis. Um, Welcome. But but thank you for doing that for our viewers. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. Murray, we have people um, watching from all over, um, men and women who serve our nation and their families. Just wanted to read a couple comments to you. Uh, we have Patricia Smith says, hello all from Folsom, California. Two out of four are stationed at Nellis in Las Vegas. So she has some family members out there in Vegas. She also says, I have seen him before. I'll be in Vegas next week to see my airman and granddaughter. So maybe she'll come on down and oh, nice. see you in person. Um, you're getting a lot of applause emojis too. Um, Sergeant sweet. H, uh, he's giving you some love. Uh, he is a, an, an awesome airman and a, a friend of ours and a friend of the show. He's he's sending you Sergeant H from yeah. overseas. He's watching today too. Thanks um, for watching. Yeah. Thanks for what you guys are doing. I appreciate it. You got it. <laughs> so, so Mary, um, so I'm, and uh, I'm, we probably should have asked you this earlier, but where did Saw Chuck come from? Like, what is, unless well, that's on your birth certificate, then I'm, I'm sorry. Saw Chuck <laughs> came from uh, my dad and he was Ukrainian. So um, 100% Ukrainian. So that's Saw Chuck. And then Murray is actually a Scottish and it came from my mom's last name. So it's actually my mom's maiden name. So I have two last names as my name. My first name, Murray, is um, my mom's last name. And Saw Chuck, of course, is my dad's. My mom always makes a joke out of it because I'm only child. They wanted more kids. They just couldn't have more. And they were like, uh, my, mom, my mom always said, I knew I was going to get my name in there somehow. So, <laughs> so I made, it, I made my last name your first name so I didn't lose it. So, and That's now awesome. what I do most of the time when I perform, I don't even use my last name. I, I just use Murray the Magician or whatever because Saw Chick gets a little bit, you know, confusing if you haven't heard it before, you know. So. No, it's unique though. Like, I, I'll, I'll never yeah. forget Saw Chuck at ever in life so uh, tell me about it even murray growing up you know i never liked the name because every murray on tv was either a nerd or a dog honestly <laughs> God, you look back at the old tv show wasn't mad about you their dog's name murray yes. and a bunch of other shows and i was like how the how did this happen really and now i love it because now i'm and i realize the older i get the more and more i am starting to look like a dog which is kind of weird <laughs> oh no no oh, oh, no no so, so one thing I've always wondered is how do magicians come up with new skills and performances? Like, oh, how do they come up with new skills? <laughs> they steal them. No, no, they don't. <laughs> um, they don't. Uh, that's funny to a few people watching. If there's magicians, um, no, no, you know, you, you get to a point in your life where you try to figure out um, how you want to be a little bit different. So, you know, like anything, you learn how to do something, and then you learn how to do it better or different if you want to stand out. And that's what I've done. You know what I mean? I've always, I've never met, said my, I'm the best magician in the world, but I try to be the most entertaining. And to me, at the end of the day, I have a saying, don't fool them, entertain them. And so that's kind of what I've always lived my life around. If you look at some of the greatest musicians or singers in the world, um, they're not the greatest singers in the world. Like Madonna is not the greatest singer in the world, but she is one of the greatest entertainers. And neither is Britney Spears, but she, you know what I mean? And there's always a judgment on all those different singers, but, but they are commercially uh, sound because a, a lot of people like these people you know and so that's that's me as being an entertainer is I just kind of want to be uh, you know very commercial and and you know when you come watch my show or hang out with me it's just always a good time you know and that's it you know absolutely so I, I did see that you were on uh, America's Got Talent how, how was that experience good we had a great time uh, I did a bunch of various tricks I hadn't done before I managed to train a big steam engine which was my father's uh, when he was alive he got to see that he flew down with my mom to watch that and I did another trick where I turned a girl and this is a 2010 now so I, did, I turned a girl into a tiger and, and now she's a cougar hey um, <laughs> but oh it's been 10 years come on now. 
Um, but um, but yeah, so I had a great time on that show and made good friends. Me and Howie Mandel become good friends over the years, and uh, and Sharon Osbourne's a sweetheart, you know. So it's it was a great show for me. It was very, and it was also back in the day when we weren't allowed to use social media and have a presence uh, competing. And now they live for it because they realize that's what drives ratings. But back in the day, we weren't allowed to have any of that stuff because they thought it would sway the votes. So at that time, when they did watch us on TV, we had like 22 million live viewers, which is pretty unbelievable. Uh, I think it's down to about eight and a half million now, which is still a lot. But 22 million is kind of hard to understand, you know, because literally when you walk out and you fly away and you're in an airport or somebody sees you publicly like that, instantly overnight people recognize you. And it's kind of interesting to have that happen, you know, once in your life or something, you know, so it's a good experience for me. That's awesome. Hmm. Chief keeps saying someday we're going to make it there where we can't go to Target anymore and <laughs> not get recognized. We're, 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 I can't go to Walmart right now. So we're, we're, we're getting there. That's right. Baby steps. You know, start with the dollar store and then Walmart. And Target. Yeah. Way up. Exactly. So what's ahead for you, Murray? Where can people go to find out more about your performances and see you in Vegas? And then like Patricia, if she's already seen you, what's, um, what's maybe different now that she might want to come back for? Well, I change my show all the time every six months or so. Cause what I, you know, I'm very fortunate to do a lot of different TV shows. You know, one I do a lot is uh, something called Masters of Illusion on CW. Uh, this will be our eighth season that I'll be on it this year. And um, I need new ideas and new effects. So every year I start putting in new effects in my show in the summertime. It gives me six to eight months to work them up before we film again. And it kind of forces me to get new ideas. I mean, I have enough mm-hmm. material. My show is only about an hour and 10 minutes, 75 minutes long. So you don't, I don't really need new material all the time. But I like the challenge. I like to add new things to my show. And also when I'm doing TVs, TV shows, I don't like to go back on a TV show and repeat a trick if I don't have to. Um, so I'm always putting new stuff in the show and new ideas, you know, and um, you know, I'm at the Tropicana uh, Laugh Factory, um, Thursday through Sunday, four o'clock shows here in Las Vegas. And the shows are all good for any age. And then seven days a week, I am over at the Luxor in a show called uh, Fantasy. It's, it's, I believe it's just over 20 years old, 21 years old on the strip. It's a phenomenal show, great for couples. And, um, and I'm doing the guest spot over there as well, along with my fiance, uh, Danny Elizabeth, who's a showgirl and dancer in Las Vegas. So it's, you can always see me somewhere. And if not, always see me on TV, like I said, Master of Illusion or on my YouTube channel, which is Magic Murray on YouTube or my website, you know, which is murraymagic.com, um, all over the place. So I know also on Pawn Stars, I think this is my 15th season I've filmed with Pawn Stars as the oh. magic expert on the show. So I'm, I'm very fortunate and very lucky. I try to keep myself busy, you know. Uh, you're doing an excellent job of keeping yourself busy. Uh, but, uh, you know, I know, we definitely uh, appreciate you for uh, spending some time with us today, and also just bringing some magic to our Tuesday. Like it's that was. I'm still trying to get over this whole five of diamond. I'm trying to figure out how. <laughs> to, um, Same. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I probably won't ever get it, but uh, it's pretty cool, though, isn't it? It's definitely interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, but no, we we definitely appreciate you for uh, for for having that mindset to want to do something for uh, the, the military members, the service members out there, because. Uh, like I said, you know, it, it takes it. We, we need we need folks to entertain us. We need all these other support systems uh, in the country to to get our minds off of all this craziness that's going on. Or or if we're downrange, definitely, you know, you know, uh, defending the country. We 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 need that sense of like calmness or or something to get our minds off of what, what's going on. So thank you for your your support. Thank you for always uh, be willing to get on the road uh, to. To, to come to us to, to, you know, just, you know, give us a reprieval from all the craziness that we deal with on a daily basis. So thank you on behalf of the service members. Oh, well, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here and, and to be talking to you guys. And thank you for everything you guys do. You know, it's, it's important, you know? Hey so, uh, chief. Yes. Before you wrap up. Um, I think that, I think Murray's mom is watching on your page. She says, oh. hi, is her, is it Arlene? Yeah, that's my mom. She says, hi, son <laughs> on chief's, uh, Facebook page. So there she you go. Loves See? watching. 81 you know. years old and still savvy with the technology. Look at that. See? That, that go is. mom. Go mom. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you're with us, ma'am. That's awesome. <laughs> Mama Murray, yeah. you did you did good with your son. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. So th- <laughs> thank you for uh, you know, thank you for everything, uh Murray. Definitely uh appreciate it. Uh this brings so much, you know, 
uh, energy and morale to all the airmen, soldiers, guardians, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guard members. We wish you all the best, and we definitely have to come check you out when we come to Vegas. Oh, for sure. You guys are always a guest, you know, and uh, and also we also have discounts and, and all sorts of things for anyone in the service, and uh, it means a lot to us, and will always mean a lot to us. So, uh, and thank you for everything you guys are doing out there. You're not forgotten, and you're always remembered, and we're always singing you guys. So, and women. You, could you could turn me into a hyena, a hyena or something. That's <laughs> <laughs> that might cost you, but it's very possible. If that's, if that's the way, we can work on that. Hyena. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> Well, well, thanks again. Like I said, we wish you all the best. And uh, Chief Chat out. Chief Chat bye. out. Bye. Guys, bye-bye.